With Design Shop, you're going to need to select elements, scale them, and rotate them to manipulate your designs to your final um, desired outcome. Let's take a look at how to do that. To select elements, you can do that in the project view by clicking on the level in the project view that you want to select. So if I want to select at the project level, I can do that, and I'll select everything in the project. And I'll get a resize edit box around this. So I can select it. If I want to select multiple elements, I can expand out a color. To select multiple consecutive elements, I can click on one. I can hold shift and click on another, and I will get everything in between. If I want to select non-consecutive elements, I can click on one, and I can hold control and click on others, and I will select non-consecutive elements so I won't get the bits in between. If I want to select them graphically, I can do that. I can do that simply by clicking on them. Now, the thing about clicking on an element to select it is I'm only going to get the topmost layer. So it's like I'm, I'm kind of putting my mouse down and I'm, I'm clicking on the actual embroidery and I'm only going to get what I can touch. So I can't select the levels or the layers that are underneath. So if I want to get to those layers, I need to select them either in the project view or in the project view, we have a view icon, so I can hide elements by clicking on this little red eyeball, or I can lock the elements. If I hide or lock something, so let's say I hide this bird or all of the yellow, I can then click on the layer underneath. So if I hide something or if I lock it, I can select down through my layers to get to those. All right, let's show that again so we can see everything that we've got. So we can select things graphically. We can select things in the project view. Once I have them selected, though, I need to be able to scale them. When I have them selected, I have a resize edit box up around it. It has a square in each corner and then centered over the top and centered on the sides. If I click in this corner, I can click and drag to scale my design. The software will not limit me. So I can do all kinds of things that probably won't sew out well. Let me hit undo real quick. If I want to scale proportionally, I can hold the shift key on my keyboard as I do that, and it will lock it to proportional. If I want to scale from the center out, I can hold the alt key, and it will shift to center out. And if I want to do both, I'm just going to hold both on my keyboard. And now I can scale center out and proportionally by holding the shift key and the alt key. So shift scales proportionally, alt scales from the center out, and we can, we can scale designs. How big can we scale designs? And, and mostly I'm talking about wireframe designs, so those, those shapes with properties and those stitch properties associated with them. And for the most part, you want to stick around 25%. And scaling up is usually easier than scaling down. When you're scaling down, you're kind of cramming those stitches into smaller spots. And even though Design Shop will adjust the densities of your fills and your, and your satin stitches so that you remove um, stitches when you get smaller, when you're dealing with kind of these tight outline areas and you're dealing with a, a walk or a bean stitch that's going around them, those input points are getting closer and closer and closer together, which makes those stitches smaller. Once you start getting smaller than your needle diameter, then you're going to start having some thread breaks. So try to stick around that 25%. The more detailed something is, the less scalable it is. If it's something very, very simple, let's say like a stop sign, you could probably scale that up and down all day long and not have an issue. Let's look at some other things that we can do with this. When I have the resize edit box up, I can go on the side and I can scale just the width or I can go to the top and scale just the height. Let me hit undo twice to get back to a normal kind of proportion. So I can select at the design level or the project level and I can get the whole thing. And I have resize edit up. If I want to scale by a number, I can come down on the scale bar, double click in the width or the height, and I can type whatever number I want in here. So let's say I wanted three inches. As long as this 
box is pressed in. This is the lock aspect ratio box. As long as that is pressed in, when I hit enter or I move my cursor off of this bar, it will scale everything proportionally. So lock aspect ratio scales things proportionally. If I want to scale by a percentage, I can click on either the H or the W. You'll see that when my cursor moves over that, I get a little hand. When I click on that, I can scale by a percentage. So if I wanted to go up 120%, I can do that. And as long as this is clicked on, um, or pardon me, checked, lock, that's going to lock that aspect ratio as well. So it'll scale proportionally. If I uncheck that, I can scale the width and the height um, differently. You'll also notice that I can rotate by a specific degree down here. So if I want to rotate this 45 degrees, I can type 45 in here, hit enter on my keyboard, and it will rotate 45 degrees. If I want to rotate graphically, I can select that design. When I have the resize edit box up, I can click within this box a single click, and it will hollow out my handles. Now if I hover over the corner, I can rotate. And if I look at the bottom of the screen, it will show the angle in degrees. So let me get this back, negative 45. There we go, I let go, and it now rotates that. Let me um, click on the top center and I can slant my design. If I want to skew it, I can go over the side and skew it. And again, the software's not going to limit you. You can do all kinds of things that probably won't end up sewing well. So keep your, your editing and your scaling and your rotating kind of to a minimum when you're dealing with these wireframe designs. Let's go ahead and go back a few times. And I'm going to use the history to go back all the way to rotate. So that's when I rotated it back. It's going to take a minute to go back through all of that. There we go. So we can select elements graphically. We can select them in the project view. We can scale them graphically. We can scale them also numerically with that bottom bar. And we can rotate them graphically as well as using that H or that W to get to a specific degree. So you've got a lot of options for manipulating your designs on screen and with numbers. So you have um, kind of an infinite possibility of manipulations for your designs.